And welcome back to the latest episode of Five Alarm Task Force. I'm your host, Steve Green. Uh, I Yes, we have been away for a while. Unfortunately, I was ill with a serious infection that, uh, thank goodness, has been brought under control and I'm feeling better. Not 100% yet, but uh, the doctors say I'm on my way. And uh, that's the most important point. And we're back. And I, I couldn't be happier to come back than with a close friend for nearly 30 years. Um, a gentleman who has been on the podcast several times, who has a role, who has led a role in the a fire department down here in South Florida, uh, Broward County Fire Rescue, a division of the Broward County Sheriff's Office, and came down as a paramedic from the Boston area where I'm from. And that's what really cemented our friendship. Uh, he got his paramedic degree at Northeastern, right, Todd? Was that that's absolutely yeah, right. Northeast Very good memory. Right. right. Uh, and it's funny because my nephew, uh, one of my nephews got his master's degree after graduating from Brandeis, master's degree in uh, criminal law at Northeastern University. Oh, very good. As well. Great school, great school. And, uh, and yeah, I, we used to go when I was at Brandeis, we used to head over there to visit some friends, had a great time. And, and, and that connection, plus another mutual friend of ours who actually, we, we met at his wedding, which was Mike, um, uh, what's his last name? Uh, Mike Jackals. Mike Jackals, right. And that was interesting because when we were starting our company, Dalmatian Productions, we put a letter in, in Firehouse, and I get a call from the Onondaga County in Syracuse, New York, fire, uh, fire director, who said, hey, do you know Mike Jackals? And I said, no, why? He goes, well, he was assistant chief at the, I forget the township next to us, right next to DeWitt. And he said, you guys have to know each other. We've been in at least five or six calls at the same time, a mutual aid. Well, Mike and I didn't meet, hadn't known each other. We met, we became friends. Mike wanted to get married and I was a notary. And he said, would you do the wedding? I went to the wedding and he introduced me to Todd and the rest is history. Uh, it's Todd a very I, small world, very small yeah, world fire service. Since then. So let me just let, let you know about this friend of mine. Uh, Todd LeDuc with MS, CFO and CEM uh, in Florida Fire is a th nearly 30 year veteran. He was a 30-year veteran Broward County, Florida Fire Service. He served as the assistant fire chief and was also the secretary of the International Association of Fire Chiefs Safety, Health, and Survival Section. And congratulations on the, uh, you were reelected. Thank goodness. Thank we you very much. We did a lot of uh, public uh, social media to push that along. And he, is a peer he was a peer reviewer for both professional credentialing and agency accreditation with the Center for Public Safety Excellence. He holds a master's degree in fire service leadership as a de designated chief fire officer, certified emergency manager, and holds fellow status in the Institute of Fire Engineers. He publishes and conferences, and, and publishes and conferences presents frequently, is on numerous editorial advisory boards, and has conducted consulting studies of public safety agencies in over a dozen states. He has been recognized by both the IAFC and the IAFF for his leadership on firefighter survival. He was also a board member of the YMCA of South Florida, and Health Mothers, Healthy Babies of Broward County. Now, he did retire uh, about a year and a half ago, and he actually got to spend a full day in retirement. He played golf. That's, That's a true story. And then the next day, second day after his retirement, why don't you tell him what happens, Todd? So, uh, yeah, I've been told I failed uh, the retirement test uh, miserably, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, I guess for, for good good reason, uh, you know, as you point out, Steve, uh, my passion, um, you know, has been firefighter health and, and safety. Um, and uh, I had the, the opportunity uh, to join a, a company uh, that I would become familiar with through um, my time at Broward County and in, in Florida Fire Chiefs and uh, the IFC, really, um, which was LifeScan Wellness uh, Centers and uh, um, join their executive team as their chief strategy officer. So uh, just a, a natural fit um, for me to continue uh, my passion, uh, which is, uh, you know, addressing the preventable uh, risk and, and reducing risk and saving lives. Quite frankly, it uh, was, was a tremendous opportunity that I was blessed to have. And it's great. And, you know, you've continued the work. You actually started, even though you weren't working for them, you started that relationship when you were still executive assistant chief at Broward County. And that goal was to, as we saw the, the firefighter cancer initiative 
really kick in over the last five to eight years. Um, and we saw a better focus by our national organizations, both from the IAFC, SHS, the IFC itself, the IAFF and the NVFC, a stronger focus on firefighter health and welfare, the development of the, as we said, the cancer initiative, the behavioral health initiatives, all this was, was coming up at the right time so that as you got familiar with LifeScan while you were still at Broward, it, it gave you an insight into how that company could actually mesh to our goals that you have had always, that I've picked up from you and, and from others of firefighter health, wellness, and fitness for duty. So why don't you talk about the company, what they do and how it's done and, and what our people could expect if they are looking in their area for their department or a neighboring department who might be you know, interested in, in doing this. Sure, absolutely, Steve. And, and let me just start by saying uh, I'm glad to glad to uh, hear that you're on the mend. Uh, I, I know you've had a, uh, a challenging month, so I'm, I'm glad that uh, you're back uh, almost almost uh, back to 100%. So it's good to good to be on again today. I always uh, enjoy. It's a special treat for me to uh, um, to be with you and your listeners and uh, uh, your audience. So um, as you pointed out. Um, you know, firefighters' uh, health and first responders' health really um, is very um, unique um, and is uh, different in many ways from um, general public um, health. Um, so, uh, you know, LifeScan was founded by uh, um, a couple, Patricia Johnson and um, her now husband, uh, Mike Taraner, um, in, in 1998 in Florida, so over two decades ago, um, with a simple mission, uh, which was to save the lives of first responders. Um, and, and the the design and the, the vision was to uh, develop a comprehensive um, early detection physical exam using some of the baseline um, NFPA 1582 uh, NFPA 1583, which of course is your fitness assessment, comprehensive uh, lab panels, um, but also to integrate um, enhanced uh, imaging as part of the um, as part of the physical. So um, we're somewhat unique we, that we um, we've incorporated ultrasound imaging um, to look for. Um, disease processes, cardiovascular issues, uh, blockages uh, before symptoms present. Um, and you know, certainly uh, we look at uh, occupational cancer in firefighters. We know that uh, uh, general public, 40% of us are gonna battle cancer at some time um, in our lives. Um, and we know for firefighters from the NIOSH study um, that we have 9% higher risk than that, than general population. And unfortunately, we have 14% higher um, mortality rates, meaning that we don't survive our cancers. Um, so what LifeScan has designed is a uh, comprehensive three-hour approach to public safety providers' physicals. And I, and I say that um, because we see both uh, law enforcement uh, as well as firefighters, um, that three-hour approach is very, very comprehensive. Um, I know in Broward, when initially um, I looked at different providers, LifeScan was really the most comprehensive one I could find in, in the country. Um, and so we actually come on site, uh, two departments. Um, we'll do um, your blood draws uh, ahead of time. Um, and then we send a, a clinical team to your location. Uh, that clinical team has a, uh, an advanced nurse practitioner, um, a clinical exercise physiologist, um, and a ultrasound technician. Um, and we see um, nine members a day, so nine firefighters or nine law enforcement officers. Um, and there's three separate and distinct components to the exam. So. Um, one hour will be spent with that clinical exercise physiologist 
who will uh, conduct the, the NFPA 1583 fitness assessment. So we're looking at things such as range of motion, strength, uh, flexibility, um, endurance. We'll do resting 12 lead uh, electrocardiogram. We'll also do a, a 12 lead EKG stress test looking for underlying factors of cardiovascular disease. Um, the second portion of that um, physical is an hour with the ultrasound technician. So ultrasound, of course, uh, allows us to see inside the body. Um, it basically does not um, have any radiation, so it's very, very safe. And we also um, are able to get uh, imaging uh, to look at both carotid arteries, uh, looking for blockages, uh, the thyroid uh, itself, um, looking for masses, nodules, anything that would be clinically suspicious. Um, we, are, we are also looking at the left ventricle um, to look for enlargement of, uh, of the heart muscle itself. We know that um, upwards of 80% of our firefighter um, sudden cardiac deaths have uh, two factors. One is underlying cardiac disease um, and uh, an enlarged left ventricle. Uh, and we can screen for that with the ultrasound, cardiac echo. Um, and that's now a recommendation that's coming out from national consensus panel. Um, and, and I'm proud to say LifeScan's been doing that for 23 years. Um, so we, we like to say we've been ahead of, um, you know, looking at a standard occupational physical does not pick up many of the uh, disease processes early and that firefighters are faced with. So that ultrasound will also look at your uh, thoracic and abdominal aorta, all the abdominal organs uh, and testicle, um, testicular ultrasound and pelvic cavity in, in women. Um, and then the last hour is spent with the nurse practitioner. Um, so she will conduct or he will conduct the full uh, NFPA 1582 head to toe physical. We'll go over all your laboratory findings. We'll review all the ultrasound imaging um, and uh, review the cardiac stress testing as well as uh, behavioral health screening, nutrition screenings, uh, and exercise uh, plan uh, for, for the member to, to work on for the next year. Um, so think about, you know, when was the last time many of us um, had a three hour stem to stern uh, overview of our health um, focused by clinical providers that all we see um, are first responders. So um, we, we know what the risks are to first responders where we are um, part of many national research projects because LifeScan has grown from uh, predominantly uh, Florida based and, and we, we do many, many, I would say even most of the fire department physicals in the state of Florida um, and law enforcement. We, we service the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office um, and, and many others. Um, but uh, through uh, really word of mouth in, in the fire service, I like to say uh, all the time, and you know this, Steve, um, there's no secrets in the fire service and it's a very tight and small community. Um, so LifeScan has been great partners with the IFC. Uh, we've, we've been a, a partner with the Florida professional firefighters for many years. And, and so we have um, really expanded over the last three years. Uh, we're now in over 20 some odd states um, where um, our, our brothers and sisters from across the country, um, as you pointed out at the beginning of the show, um, are searching for ways to combat the elevated rates of cancer, the elevated rates of cardiac death in firefighters, behavioral health, and, and through those efforts to, to provide a more robust early detection approach, um, have come to LifeScan and, and, and learned what we do and uh, talk to departments like mine and Broward, where we've been doing them for a decade in all the success stories. I mean, we know um, that uh, it, cancer is an example. We know that if we can identify cancer uh, in stage one, where it's in the primary site of origin, 
um, survival rate in most cases are in the high 90 to 100% survival. Tragically, we know that if that cancer leaves the primary site and spreads, um, in many cases at stage three and four, survival just drops off the cliff into you know the teens or even single digit. Mm. Um, and, and you know for the employers as well, obviously that's that's um, you know tragically um, it, it can be that's preventable through early detection, but. For the employers, particularly 49 of the 50 states now have some type of cancer presumption coverage under law, but we know it's it's cheaper for the employers to invest in a in a life scan physical um, than it is to treat a, a late stage cancer. You know, a stage three or four cancer, um, the NIOSH and RAND study tells us is about eight hundred thousand dollars to treat, and at the and then tragically have a bad outcome. Um, and, and we know that for the cost of a, I've got one firefighter in Spring, Texas, Matt Corso. We found a, a testicular cancer in him with imaging. He, um, they made a video on the importance of life scan in, in doing a comprehensive early detection physicals. You know, and on the video he says, um, for the less than the cost of the class A dress uniform that you would have buried me in, the department invested in life scan and that physical saved my life. I'm here today because of it. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that really hit me. Um, I, I not only heard him say that on video, he attended a, a presentation that I did at the uh, volunteer combination uh, VCOS symposium last year was in the audience and um, said that same thing in person and almost everyone in the room choked up when they heard it. Um, because that's, that's really the goal is if we, you know, I, you know, you may have heard me say, we would never not think of doing preventative maintenance and checks on our apparatus. I mean, it just would be foolhardy not to do that. We put our, ourselves and, uh, our public at risk. And really we need to bring that same approach um, annually to our firefighter physicals because um, we tragically, um, and, and I know all your listeners that are listening and, and you yourself and, and in my department in Broward, I, I look back at um, members that we've lost um, and many of them were potentially preventable um, through enhanced early detection. That's really what drove me to bring life scan wellness centers into my department in Broward. And now I'm blessed to, to be able to um, work nationally um, to bring that same level of comprehensive um, early detection physicals to my brothers and sisters across the, the country. And let's face it, a firefighter and public safety first responder Health research is evolving so quickly. We're learning additional testing, additional screening. So it's really um, it, it's really exciting for me to be at the forefront of uh, boots on the ground implementing this um, in departments across the country. So um, you know, for I'll say it again, the standard um, occupational physical. You know, think think about oftentimes when you go to one of your physicals that's not designed for a first responder. We typically order, see testing or screening ordered um, if there's symptoms. And one of the things we know um, is that in many disease processes, by the time symptoms are occurring, um, there's already been uh, damage, whether that's cardiac damage, whether that's in cancer, it's spread beyond the primary site of origin. So again, what, what we have really honed in designing is a unique physical tailored around the health risk for firefighters and law enforcement um, to find any type of risk or disease process at the earliest stage so we can quickly get it taken care of, get you back on the job and, and make sure you have a, a healthy and sound career and, and enjoy retirement um, it, you know, for a long time and in good health. So that that's really the you know, the mission, um, I know we've got limited time and, and there's so much information. We've got a, a very robust website. Uh, it's it's www.lifescanwellness.com. 
www.ecoscience.com. Uh, overviews our entire um, approach. It's, we've got a ton of resources on there for cancer, behavioral health, um, cardiovascular. Um, so uh, um, again, we're, it's, it's kind of nice to see a, a success coming out of Florida. Once again, you know, we've got this great model that was designed for the Florida Fire Service and our brothers in Florida law enforcement. Um, you know, the, uh, our, our first uh, clinic that we established was uh, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And uh, we're, we're still there today, 20 some odd years later. Um, the sheriff is now a uh, congressman, mm -hmm. Rutherford, and a new sheriff. But, uh, um, you know, you, you talk to the departments that have used LifeScan for, for two decades. There's so many survivor stories. And, uh, you know, Sheriff Gualatari, the Pinellas County Sheriff, last year's uh, Florida president of the Sheriff's Association, uh, said, uh, you know, we, we've not only saved so many lives, uh, but we've saved the agency in terms of cost because he's got a healthier workforce, um, you know, that, that knows he cares about them because he's invested in um, early detection. So it's, it, uh, for me, it's, it's been a great blessing to, uh, to be able not only to continue to stay involved in the fire service, um, but I can't tell you, and I know we're going to take a break here shortly and We'll, we'll talk, I'm sure, more in, in the second segment, but I can't tell you um, how gratifying it is on a regular basis to get a phone call, an email um, from a chief or a fellow brother and sister, firefighter, or Leo to tell me that, um, you know, I'm alive today because of what LifeScan Wellness Centers found. And uh, my family thanks you. And so it's, uh, it's gratifying. I, I enjoyed my 30 years of service at, at Broward. Um, you know, but, uh, um, this is really puts it in perspective when you're saving people's lives on a, on an almost daily basis. Right. Right. Sure. And you know, it, it folds right in when you think about it, because these are two divisions of, of public safety, which is what we're talking about today, fire and, and law enforcement. Our job, our primary job is prevention. We do work in fire prevention. The, our Leo brothers and sisters do loss prevention and uh, of, of helping citizens and business owners and so on avoid those kind of, of criminal problems. And that's still prevention. And so this ties right in to what we're supposed to do. Because if we, and, I've, and you know I've said this before, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't, no matter what the oath was of office that we took when we got that badge, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of anybody else. You know, it's funny you say that. We maybe should have contracted with yourself. I, uh, I serve on the advisory board uh, for the, uh, it's uh, a subsidy of the National Fall on Firefighters. It's called the First Responder Center of Excellence. So we hired a, uh, a, uh, a big PR marketing firm out of Washington, D.C., uh, to come up with a, a national uh, media campaign uh, to encourage firefighter physicals. And that's exactly what they came up with. Uh, the branding was you can't save others if you don't save yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, you hit it right on the head. I mean, if you think about it, you may have seen this past week, I'm pretty active on social media. Um, you know, I kind of had the analogy of, you know, hopefully as fire service community, we wouldn't have our homes without uh, smoke detectors and smoke alarms. Um, that protects our health and property in our home. Um, really, the comprehensive annual physical um, is that same protection to, to us as individuals um, and for peace of mind to our family. It's really, you know, nothing to be afraid of. The, the reality is, if we find whatever process is, is underway in your body early, almost all of it's manageable, fixable. Uh, and that's the key. You know, we, we know if we don't find it early, you know, one simple, simple example, not even cancer related. We know that uh, firefighters who don't have their blood pressure well managed and under good control are 12 times more likely to die of sudden cardiac death on the fire ground. And that's something simple, just having that checked as part of your comprehensive 
um, annual exam. If it needs a little, you know, change in your diet, a little change in the amount of salt, or even, got, you know, if we have to add, uh, you know, a little bit of medication. Um, and then when you add the comprehensive screening of, you know, uh, cardiac echo that we include in the exams, that's looking for that enlarged heart, which can be treated as well. So it's all about, uh, like you said, prevention. And if we find it early, we, we address it and we go on and have a safe and long continued career of service. So that's, that's the goal is uh, like, like you, uh, you know, every year we, we pay respect to those that have made the ultimate sacrifice. And, and, you know, we continue to see far too many, in my humble opinion, from cardiac death, cancer death, and uh, firefighter suicide. And we have great screening for all three of those. Um, and, and we need to make sure that we're getting the, we're giving our, our troops the highest level of annual screening uh, and medical exam in a, in a non-punitive way, all about making sure they survive. Right. And that's what this right. is, surviving the fire service. Yeah, I think too many we've seen, and I'm sure, and I've seen, I'm sure you've seen it as well with your experience, too many um, th that I call, um, they, they think they're invincible and they become the first domino that tips over. And as we've all seen on the demonstrations on TV with somebody sending up 3000 dominoes, when they're all set up and you don't see anything, all he does is touch one and that knocks them all the rest down. And then there's a shake. Well, the problem is that in the fire service or law enforcement, if you're the leader and you go down on an emergency scene, you've not, you're knocking all the other dominoes on that scene down and you're changing everybody's duty, what they were doing. So if you think, well, I'm, I got to go through the door, everybody knows I'm the big guy and I'm going to go through the door first. And you, you, know, you get that door open and as you cross the threshold, you collapse with chest pain because you had had chest pains before and you just didn't say anything to anybody. Well, now you have the man, the, the firefighter backing you up is in trouble because you're down. The officer who's going into making the entry with you is down. Now you got to call the RIT team in and they're, they were on the other yard just waiting for something like that. Then you have a line team coming in. So you lose a line that's supposed to uh, take care of the people on the roof. You, you got to get them off the roof because they can't be up there without a hose line protection. You've changed everybody, the entire view of that emergency scene by saying, I, I got to be the big guy. Everybody knows me by reputation. We have yeah, to get rid of ego in the fire service. Sure, absolutely. You know, there's, there's the... Uh adage it's been said you know that uh, your risks become everyone's risks when you hit the fire ground right um and you, you point out the same you know for law enforcement operations so uh, you know addressing um you know uh, listen our, our jobs are always going to have some degree of risk um that we cannot completely eliminate um, but with your health it's about addressing um preventable and manageable risk before um, tragedy strikes, and that's that's the the importance. And your, your point's very well taken. It, it transcends just you as an individual. Uh, it's really something you know that that you owe to um, your, your brother and sister um, firefighters and the Leos. And um, as a leader leading the organization, um, really you have to focus on um, addressing, as you pointed out, prevention, community risk reduction. This is kind of health risk reduction. So, uh, you know, I just want to touch, I know um, we don't have a lot of time, but you okay. know, the other, the other important, I think, timeliness of, you know, the time we find ourselves in a, of a once in a century global pandemic. Um, and I think you mentioned, uh, you had seen as of last week or just recently, 103 first responders um, have, have given their life uh, with the the COVID-19. Um, that, that doesn't even count the doctors, nurses, respiratory workers we've lost as well. Absolutely. Um, it, it, and we don't know what we don't know still about this virus. Um, you know, I've written extensively uh, with fire engineering over the last year of just some of the little research that's dribbling out on uh, long-term health consequences um, of infection uh, with COVID virus, um, changes in the, the vascular lining, um, changes in pulmonary function, 
Um, there's, there's been reporting of, uh, quote, brain fog, end quote, that, that continues for some time, uh, hypertension. So um, it becomes, in my humble opinion, and, and I'm seeing this nationally, I mean, I guess maybe a silver lining of the pandemic for first responders, um, is it, it's, I've seen anecdotally more departments focusing on the health and wellness um, of their employees. And, and I think it's so important that we, we make sure we have good comprehensive baseline physicals for our providers um, because three years from now, four years from now, five years from now, we're gonna to wanna to see subtle changes. Um, I mean, we saw this tragically um, at ground zero with 9-11 and uh, um, you know, we, we weren't necessarily aware of the long-term health consequences at the time for those that were on the pile, you know, a week or two weeks even later. So um, it's important that we get those baselines. We're now rolling out vaccines um, in, you know, first responders will, will uh, it, I'm sure, you know, be, be offered or even encouraged uh, to be vaccinated again there. We don't have long-term data on that. So it's important that we get these comprehensive early detection physicals for, for that reason as well. I mean, let's face it, this is a, a pandemic that, that rivals, you know, one that was back a century ago. Um, and the flu, yeah. Yeah, the Spanish flu. And um, with first responders being on the line and many of them being having been infected um, um, or exposed, we want to make sure we have those good baseline comprehensive physicals so um, we, can, we can track, um, you know, any type of additional assistance or um, intervention that they may need down the road as, as we continue to learn more and more about the effects. Right. You know, I, I, with what you just said, I think if, a, and I've seen many departments, both uh, uh, through social media, online, um, uh, through TV, the departments are investing so much in PPE to help protect um, their, first, their first responders who are answering these COVID, uh, a lot of these COVID calls. And we know that our, our fire service has evolved over the last 30 years, 35 years. Um, we, we are more a combination department now. We are not, not volunteers and, and, and career. We have of what we do and provide service to the community. We're not just firefighters. We're EMTs and paramedics. And we provide emergency medical services to them. And uh, with that evolution, we have to look inside that if we're willing to go all out and get every sort of PPE and, and plastic sheathing for the, for the backs of the ambulances and, and the other vehicles to do it, then if we can avoid it, if we can invest in stuff that we throw away, how do we not invest in the people that we want to keep and help them serve us and their community as long as they possibly can in good health? Yeah, I mean, you've heard me say this time and time again, Steve, and I couldn't agree more strongly. Um, a wise mentor told me if you don't have healthy and well firefighters, you don't have a fire department. That's right. Um, you know, so, you know, we we need to really, and, and I still do hear this across the country that, uh, you know, I was speaking to a department yesterday, a large metro department that was struggling to pay for physicals. Um, and, and, you know, we kind of guided them towards the assistance to fire for the grants program. Um, but we also have to, I think, prioritize, um, you know, uh, how we, in, in, this is just my, my humble opinion is, um, you know, again, we, we wouldn't think of um, hopefully not providing preventative maintenance to our equipment and our apparatus. Um, and in most cases, the cost of a comprehensive um, annual detection physical for a firefighter is substantially less than it is to maintain our apparatus. So, um, you know, I think we need to, um, I, I don't want it to be a cliche that we need to put our people first, um, because I believe, um, we all believe that, but, but uh, we, we really do have to um, you know, when I, when I look at some of the data that the IFC compiled, and it's a little bit dated, it's 2016, um, but it still showed approximately 20% of the career departments, um, about 40% um, of volunteer departments were, were not providing some type of annual physical. Um, and many of the ones that were providing physicals, uh, they weren't necessarily uh, 
comprehensive, specific to firefighters and physicals. They were a, a general, you know, general population um, exam. So um, we, we need to, as a, as a fire service, we need to continue. And, and we've made tremendous in, inroads um, from even, I mean, when you and I started, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think about, uh, you know, before I brought LifeScan uh, wellness centers into, into Broward, I had an entry physical. And then maybe if I went to my, my physician who uh, saw me, but certainly um, that provider was not familiar with occupational health risk to firefighters, um, was applying the general population recommendations to myself. I mean, um, I, I just uh, had uh, my second colonoscopy recently. And uh, I think the, the, the recent recommendations have, have lowered the, the age from 50 to now 45, but that's for general population. We know firefighters have much higher rates of colon cancer. Um, so our screenings need to be different. That's hence why LifeScan has incorporated um, imaging as part of the standard firefighter physical. So it's just a, you know, we, we've made tremendous inroads, but um, I think we still have more work to do. And, and it's, uh, I give credit to, you know, a lot of um, National Volunteer Fire Council, the IFF, the IFC, um, folks like yourself that continue to help advocate and educate. And uh, we are making progress. We're not there yet, but uh, um, I can tell you it's, it's been, and I, and I think the pandemic is actually, like I said, I think it's helped us as a service focus on the priorities of taking care of our own. Right. Great point. Great point. All right. We're going to take a break here, folks. And when we come back, uh, Todd shared one success story uh, from the firefighter in Texas, but um, he has a lot more to share with us. So we'll be right back right after these words. As always, please stay tuned. If you're watching the video, you won't see anything different. We'll be right back. And we're back with this episode of Five Alarm Task Force and my good friend and my guest, uh, Todd LaDuke, the Chief Strategy Officer for uh, LifeScan Wellness Centers. And I would be remiss, because I forgot, didn't say it at the front, is that uh, when I took ill uh, earlier uh, last month, um, I needed two visits to the local ER and my fire department in my, my city, Coral Springs, Florida, uh, came out uh, twice and um, they were the, the five stars service people. They, yes, they know I'm a former firefighter medic and my background uh, in paramedicine and working in medical offices as well as triage director, but they just took me and said, you're one of us, we're treating you like one of our own. And I just can't thank you, meaning my brothers and sisters at, at Coral Springs, enough for the help you rendered when I needed it. Um, so thank you all very much. So Todd, now that we're back, we're going to come with some really good news. We kind of maybe bummed a few people out a little bit, but it's important that you bum them out because, you know, we, we, you and I are very lucky that we have some good friends at uh, University of Miami, Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, um, uh, Dr. Mar uh, Alberto Martino Caban, uh, Martinez Caban, and Dr. Natalie, Natalie Schaefer. And these are uh, people who we met a couple of years ago. We actually did the remote. Now, so a picture you shared on, on social media promoting our conference, our, our, our interview today. And Early on in this, when this cancer in the fire service erupted, they took on, because of being members of the Sylvester Can Comprehensive Cancer Center, they took on the task of firefighter cancer. And they've been on several times. Uh, you were on with us at least once, if not, if not twice. And um, those are the kind of doctors and researchers that are also doing the kind of research that we talked about that LifeScan does. We're trying to find out more and more every day about firefighter health, wellness, and fitness for duty. Um, you know, I think it was, uh, I think it was both Dan Carrigan, Dan Jim, and Ar 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 um, Aaron Zemzow, who have said repeatedly at, at, when, on the show, a firefighter is, has to be a combination of a football player, a baseball player, a basketball player, a hockey player, and a soccer player. Because he need a firefighter, he or she needs that kind of physical ability to do the job that we do. 
And I think that's a great definition. You, you know, we all sit back and watch the, the games that we enjoy, basketball, whatever sport it is. And you just take for granted, oh, look how good she is. Look how fast he's running. Look at him go. Well, you actually are an athlete as well as a firefighter or a law enforcement officer or even an EMT paramedic. You have to perform above your normal resting heart rate most of the time. Now, I joked with the guys when they were taking me out with, with the new hydraulic litters. And I said, oh, we didn't have those in my day. We, uh, we had a lift and tug and whatever happened to your back happened to your okay. back, you know? Okay. And, and then I asked one of them, because uh, I knew I was dehydrated again. I said, you guys need to call med control to start an IV. And he says, how long have you been out? I said about 30 years. He goes, yeah, we haven't had a call med control in 30 years. We can just start an IV <laughs> if, we want to, if we think we need to start an IV. So, and I said, well, well I need one because he goes, yeah, but they're going to want to do a, a vein and puncture first and get some blood before we start. I said, oh, okay, forget. All right, that's all right. But it was just that, that banter back and forth between two firefighters, an old fart like me and, and a new young guy who's doing it. And uh, it, 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 they were just terrific. And, and again, I, I can't thank them enough for the professionalism and the brotherhood that they showed those times. So talking about this brotherhood and sisterhood that we have, let's tell our, our, uh, let's tell our listeners about some of the great results that LifeScan has wound up being able to share with people that it, they examined. Sure, absolutely. And, and let me add to, um, you know, uh, certainly shout out to uh, our, our friends at Coral Springs uh, Fire. Um, they, they're uh, great life scan customers as well, uh, both not only for the fire department, but uh, uh, Coral Springs, um, very, very proactive to law enforcement uh, and city employees as well. They, they actually see the value of comprehensive uh, early detection across the entire city workforce. Um, so not only does that provide great uh, early detection um, success, but it also helps control the city's healthcare costs. So, uh, but yeah, you know, Steve, um, when you asked me to talk about some of the successes, um, literally I could go on for days, um, you know, just, uh, you can imagine now that life scans expanded and we're in, I think it's 25 plus States. Um, it, there's not a day that goes by that, um, we, we don't, uh, hear, um, a, a success story and a, and a thank you. Um, but let me, let me just tell a, a quick story, um, that, can be uh, representative of what we do across the entire fire service and law enforcement community. So my, my own department, as you mentioned, uh, that I retired from uh, Broward County, uh, Florida, um, has uh, just finishing, I think they're maybe finishing next week, um, their physical. So it's a large department close to, you know, I think we just merged in Hallandale Beach Fire Department. And so we're, we're up north of a 800 member department at this point. Um, so LifeScan comes on site and does the, the Broward physicals. We're there for um, five months since we see 45 people a week. Um, so we, we basically become part of the department for half of the year. Um, you know, at the same time, one of our other teams is over in Fort Lauderdale doing their exams and another team is up in Coral Springs. So, um, and, uh, um, you know, we've got um, so many successes, but I want to tell just this one story because I, I actually, um, ironically, I didn't find out about it through LifeScan. I got a phone call uh, or a text from a dear friend and colleague, Keith Tyson. Oh, sure. So for those of you that, that don't know Keith, um, Keith retired uh, from Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, um, is a cancer survivor, um, and for quite some time has been the national education director um, for the firefighter cancer support network. Um, and he's a dear friend. Um, so he texted me or called me and said, Hey, I want to let you know, LifeScan um, found um, a great early success uh, cancer find uh, in Broward in your home department. So I, of course, I didn't want to violate any confidentiality or um, so I asked him, you know, if, if you wouldn't mind, um, that, that member had, had reached out to Keith to, to help with treatment and support. And uh, so, so Keith basically asked if he could connect the two of us. And lo and behold, it was 
one of my 41 year old um, captains who um, was on special operations, um, was completely asymptomatic, thought he was going in for just his routine. You know, we say routine, but it's really one, you know, the top in the industry, uh, public safety physicals. Um, but he had just had it, uh, you know, his prior one, and everything was fine. So he went in, um, went through the exam, and on imaging, um, we were able to find um, a mass within the bladder. And, um, and I'm relating the story that the captain told me. So he, um, he basically, we, we were able to go back and look at prior year's images, uh, which did not have that mass. It was definitely looked suspicious. Um, so uh, the captain was, was uh, given all of his, completed his entire exam met with our nurse practitioner, um, went over the, the findings, gave him copies of his images, shared her concerns, um, and, and told him he, he needed to follow up with uh, urology, um, which he, he did. He, he, uh, he told me that he contacted, I, I think with Keith Tyson's help, uh, one of the top urologists in South Florida, who ironically wasn't seeing new patients. Um, but when the urologist uh, heard uh, 41-year-old firefighter, asymptomatic, and a mass on imaging. He said, I'll see you at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, so the, my captain uh, made, made the trip in. Um, he shared with me that the, the urologist looked at the images uh, and, and basically told him, I, I don't even need to do additional testing. Um, that's, that's a... a an early stage bladder cancer. And uh, uh, he's, uh, long, long story short, he's uh, going to have a tremendously successful outcome um, going through a course of treatment that uh, compared to what it would have been had he had symptoms, um, his treatment course would have been much more invasive, much more um, challenging for him. Um, and the outcome likely would not have been the same. But you know what he shared with me? And it, it, I tell the story now across the country that the urologist told him he had been practicing for, I think he said close to three decades. And um, this was the first uh, 41 year old asymptomatic bladder cancer that he had seen in his practice. He said, you know, typically uh, bladder cancer, you've got blood in the urine, you've got uh, pain in urination, distension, bloating. Um, some symptomology, and, and we talked in the first segment before the break, you know, I think uh, oftentimes I've seen um, in, in medicine that we, we wait till we have symptomology before we, we do um, testing or, or screening. And, you know, some of that's driven, I, I think, not to upset anyone on the talk show here on the radio and the podcast, but some of that's driven by um, insurance you know, industry, right? That um, we won't we won't pay for a test until you know it, it can be medically justified. But you know, the life scan model, which you know, purposely we don't accept insurance uh, because we don't want to be driven by the insurance com industry. Um, we we've designed the, the model that um, finds disease processes before symptomology occurs in many cases. Um, so that, that's just one example. Um, so compelling to me. And again, Broward's a large department. So we see, you know, departments of several thousand, the Jacksonville Sheriff, Pinellas Sheriff, um, and we see departments as small as 45. Um, but in Broward, within a 30-day window of exams, so within the last month, quite frankly, because the exams are just finishing, we've been there for five months, in the last 30 days, um, in addition to that 41-year-old captain, we've uh, also identified um, two uh, prostate cancers, 59-year-old uh, uh, in an early 40s, um, both, both members of my, my home department. Um, so uh, um, it, it's been so, and we've been doing it at, at Broward Life Scan Wellness Centers, physicals for a decade. Um, so, you know, we, we've found so many, um, uh, cancers, early cardiac issues, hypertension that just needed to be managed. 
um, valvula issues, aortic issues. Um, but it's been so compelling this year because we've, we've in uh, just a 30 day period found three cancers that the Broward Fire Union is actually uh, making its own uh, testimonial video with the survivors um, to encourage, encourage other locals and other departments um, of the importance of, of making this a priority. And, you know, you mentioned uh, Dan Kerrigan. And, you know, I, like I said, I, this segment could literally go on for days. And I, and I know um, you or I unfortunately don't have that time. Um, but, you know, you talk about 2020 has been a heck of a heck of a year. And sure has. hopefully, uh, you know, shortly it'll be in the rearview mirror. Um, a lot of people have suffered this year and, and continue in, in thoughts and prayers go out to all those impacted. Um, but Dan Kerrigan and Dan and, and Dennis Rubin, who's up in Pennsylvania, right next to Dan, uh, they've actually now, um, with both of their departments and surrounding departments, have contracted with LifeScan Wellness Center because of both of them have been huge health and wellness advocates in the fire service and wanted to offer something more comprehensive for their firefighters than the standard occupational physical. But Dan sent me an email on um, Thanksgiving morning, so not that couple of weeks ago. Um, and it was a firefighter, Bob. Um, I, I know he's comfortable with me sharing uh, uh, because I, I've talked to him personally and uh, put it out on social media with his permission to help increase awareness. But um, here's, a, here's a volunteer firefighter um, who uh, went through his life scan uh, wellness physical. And we, we found a um, a close to 95% uh, occlusion of his left anterior descending coronary artery. Um, for those of you that are in the medical know, uh, paramedics or uh, listening, um, that's commonly referred to as the widow maker mm -hmm. because it's oftentimes first symptom presentation is sudden cardiac death. Um, you know, Gary Ludwig at the IFC has a, you know, champion the, if you don't feel well, don't make it your final farewell. Um, so what we've tried to do, and Bob's a great example that he, he would have, you know, the tones would have gone off. He would have gone out for a call and he would have been a line of duty statistic likely um, from, from a sudden cardiac death on the emergency scene. So he basically said um, he wanted to share that story. I told him you just made my Thanksgiving. I mean, what better way to wake up on Thanksgiving Day, knowing that um, what you're involved in is something so special that you saved the fellow brother firefighter's life. Um, and it's, it's not me, it's our great, we have 20 some odd clinical teams that travel the country. Um, God love them, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, traveling, they um, land and, and set up shop at the departments in all these different states and, and conduct the physicals and, uh, you know, Bob, Bob is making a, his own testimonial video because what he told me was, um, you know, it was, I didn't have any symptomology. Um, you, you found this during the, um, during the uh, 1583 portion where our exercise physiologist uh, was doing the, the 12 lead stress testing and had stress abnormalities on the EKG. Um, subsequently ended up, I guess they had difficulty stenting. So they ended up having to bypass, do a by, bypass with him. Um, but he feels fine. He's, he's back with his family. He's, uh, he's got a new lease on life. And what he said to me was, I, I want to do this video um, with COVID. I got to figure out because, you know, how, how we do, maybe we pull the truck outside. And, but he said, if I can save one life of a brother or a sister firefighter from sharing the story of what Life Scan Wellness did for me, I, it, it, gives back to him um, many times over in, in satisfaction, knowing that he's helped others. So, um, um, you know, I talked about Mac Corso's story in, in saying, you know, for less than the cost of a, of a um, dress uniform to bury me in. So it's um, these, you know, um, I guess it's a little bit scary that we find so much, we call them significant findings is the term we use that require additional follow-up and in uh, testing and in intervention. Um, but think about if we weren't doing this type of comprehensive program, all that would still be out there. And likely we'd just be reading about 
one more member with cancer that died, one more sudden cardiac death, a firefighter suicide. Um, so these are, these are um, you know, really, to me anyways, um, real world um, compelling uh, brother and sister firefighters that, that are alive today and are, are going to have a great, healthy rest of their career and a long, enjoyable retirement with their grandkids and their family and their spouses. So um, when when we all are, we're, we're making tremendous strides in, uh, you know, risk reduction and, and cancer best practices and um, you know, exposure, decontamination, uh, uh, but part of the solution on, on firefighter survival has to be upping our game on um, firefighter comprehensive um, early detection physicals. And, and um, you know, I, I, I say life scan wellness centers, um, um, but we, we never stop in terms of um, upping our game, I, as I mentioned, you know, recommendations coming out about cardiac ultrasound and echo for firefighters. We've been doing that for 23 years, but we're, we're always looking at um, what, are the, what are the next um, enhancements that we can bring. Um, we just, and this, this is probably breaking news. Uh, we just partnered with, uh, for some time, Dr. Denise Smith, who's one of the, she's up at Skidmore. She's one of the leading researchers on firefighter cardiovascular death and, um, we, we partnered with her on some data since we see um, 2020 will be close to 50,000. Think about that, 50,000 firefighters and in, in law enforcement officers across the United States. So um, with that, we've got this tremendous responsibility to, to help uh, continue to evolve, um, you know, the, the knowledge of uh, public safety and first responder health. So one of the things she looked at was um, testosterone in male firefighters in changes. Uh, she's just publishing this in a journal called Andrology. And then she looked at the cardiac echoes that we do. And what she noticed was there was a correlation between lower testosterone um, and changes in your left ventricle. Um, so that was with about 500 firefighters. Um, we need to do more work um, with a larger sample, um, but her, her hypothesis is um, there that it may be a, a subclinical indication of early cardiac uh, risk. So uh, it's those type of things that we continue to try to enhance um, what we're doing, what services we provide, and, and then use the, the trust that's been placed in us um, from across the United States from so many first responders. Um, to help to continue to evolve um, what we know about first responder health and, and what we can do to make sure that our mission, which is saving the lives of America's heroes, um, is something that's always evolving. It's, you know, we're not, uh, we're not happy being complacent. Um, you know, we, we're always looking at um, what other enhancements can we bring to the toolbox to make sure our first responders go home safe every, every day. That's great. It, those stories and the fact that you're, you're working with Dr. Smith, who, you know, every other issue of one of our trades comes out, she has a great piece in there or is quoted in a piece in there about her research into first responders' health and safety. And, you know, it, it's just, you know, there are 1.2 million of us in America. And uh, we come from all backgrounds, all religions, all creeds and colors, um, but we all share one thing, and that's the passion we have to protect our communities, and that's just firefighters. Add in our brothers and sisters in law enforcement and our brothers and sisters in EMS. Um, we, we go out of our way, uh, whether we're career or volunteer, we go out of our way to try to help our communities, um, give of ourselves, uh, give a lot of ourselves and sometimes take away from our, our families so that we can give to this either vocation or avocation that we've selected. But, and that's wonderful and that's great, but none of us wear a cape. And since we don't have kryptonite on earth, we have different versions of kryptonite that we as first responders have to be 
cognizant of, and I'm not saying dwell on it, but you have to be cognizant of it. Uh, just like you may not have, for example, you may be a paramedic and you haven't done a cut down in it, two years. But if you're on an emergency and the doctor says, get, do a cut down now on the left ankle, you, you know how to do it. You do it. And that's because it's in you. It's part of you. And I think what this podcast stresses, especially today with you and what we're learning even more about life scan is that we have to be ready to do what has to be done, whether it's for our community or for ourselves. Absolutely. It's, you know, one, I, I, to be, one, thing, it's one thing to be selfless. And I would say 99% of us are, are selfless because of what we do. Sure. But we have to try to, we have to make sure that that selfless doesn't include ourselves because we have to take care of ourselves to be able to serve. As we said at the very beginning, we have to take care of ourselves so we can continue to serve and do the job, whether it's again, vocation or avocation, we love doing it. That's why we're there. And, sure. we, you know, and that, and that's what you brought out today. It's so important for us to take care of ourselves so that we can continue to take care of our communities. Yeah, and you know, I, maybe I'll close on this, Steve. Um, you know, I, I would submit to your your listeners um, that you're, you're absolutely right that none of us do wear a cape. Uh, but when it comes to your health and wellness, um, really comprehensive early detection physicals are the cape. Right. Exactly. Um, and and that you know is is not something to be fearful of. It's it. Uh, brings to attention um, how to manage your own health and, and do it in a way um, that you can not only continue to serve, as you point out, but uh, continue to spend time with loved ones and those that care about you. So uh, um, I want to I want to put a, a plug in uh, once again because we had you know we've had a good hour, but I, I know there's so much information um, still to to uh, um, talk about, and your your listeners I'm sure are intrigued. Um, so our website is a tremendous resource, www.lifescanwellness.com. It's got uh, not only what we do, but there's a resource page on there, as I mentioned, with a lot of uh, links to different uh, resources from uh, National Volunteer Fire Council, the IFF, IFC. Um, you've got uh, an opportunity to see Dan Kerrigan in, in my books on there as well that have a tremendous amount of uh, information um, in them. So uh, and it's, it's uh, always an honor and a, and a privilege to spend time with, with you and your listeners um, on, a, on a topic today that, uh, you know, is not only near and dear to me, but um, ultimately saves the lives of, of our fellow uh, first responder brother and sisters. Well, it's, it's great to have you in. You gave the website and uh, on Twitter, you're at Todd J. LeDuc. All right. That's your uh, handle. That's Twitter. Twitter handle, yes. And uh, an email if they want to reach you at LifeScan. Uh, sure. They can send uh, an email either through the website. There's a, a contact uh, uh, area where they can uh, request uh, any information and they'll be forwarded to myself or email me directly. That's Todd, T-O-D-D -D, dot Leduc, L-E-D-U-C at lifescanwellness.com. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to continue a dialogue with anyone or answer questions or help uh, in any way possible with your uh, health and wellness of your, of your members. Great, great, thanks so much. Well, Todd, it's great spending time with you. Every time you come on, uh, it's great information. When you were still with Broward as, as executive assistant chief there, you always brought great information. And since LifeScan, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be able to share this information with our viewers and listeners uh, now, especially that we're on YouTube as well as, as our audio podcast available on every podcast engine. And some I didn't even know that were out there. But uh, that's great because more people hear these stories, more people hear the information that hopefully will drive maybe one more person to say, hey, Chief, I just listened to this podcast about this thing, Life Scan Wellness Centers. Do you know anything about them? Can we look into it? If that happens just once, then this podcast has served, has served its purpose. Uh, abs absolutely. And I uh, thank you for, for uh, continuing to, to keep in the forefront uh, the importance of firefighter health and safety. And I, I want to wish all your listeners uh, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas and 
Um, let's all hope uh, 2020 um, holds a, a bright future for uh, for the fire service and first responders. And uh, Steve, I, I wish you continued health and uh, great great holidays. Thank you. You too. We have a merry Christmas. Thanks again. Thanks. Uh, always great to have you. All right, we'll be right back right after this message. Hi, folks. I just want to come back with a couple of messages for this video. Uh, number one, again, my sincere thanks to my dear friend, Todd LaDuc from Life Skin Wellness Centers. If you have any questions or you didn't get his email or the website, just send an email to info at 5-alarmtaskforcecorp.org and we'll put you in touch with Todd and make sure that connection has happened. One of the things that we talked about in this podcast, as Todd mentioned, was sometimes there's a lack of symptoms that you recognize. And to be honest with you, with the infection I just went through, that was my case. Um, I did not have the uh, preeminent symptom that most men have when uh, we get this infection. And that is, the infection is called a UTI, urinary tract infection. Not that common in men, although men often have bladder uh, infections and kidney infections, but UTIs are very common in women. And, and in some men where there's a proclivity, uh, a family proclivity towards it. I had never had one uh, whatsoever. And the preeminent uh, symptom is burning upon urination, which I didn't have at all. So as the doctor explained to me subsequently, in a guy when um, you don't have that symptom, so you don't know that there's a problem, the infection begins to grow and affects other parts of your body. My symptoms were extreme lethargy, lack of appetite, um, uh, inability to, dr to drink liquids, um, constant nausea when trying to eat any foods. Um, and subsequently, I developed spasticity in my legs and arm, which is due to a higher than normal lactic acid and lower than normal uh, potassium. Uh, so why am I sharing this? It is because I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson with all my medical background. Um, knowing what that preeminent symptom was, I would have known to go to my primary care or visit a urologist. I didn't have that symptom. So I had no idea what I was suffering with over the course of initially the first two and a half weeks. Um, I got to the point where I was so weak and beginning short of breath that I had to go into the ER. And that visit, um, it was okay, but they only found dehydration and high ketones. So they hung a bag of normal saline. I felt better. A couple of hours later, sent me home. I thought Friday, I'd be great. And uh, I just, in the morning, I woke up feeling a little bit better. But by the day, rest of the day, I was back to where I was all day Saturday, Sunday. Um, and uh, Monday, we finally, my daughter finally got an appointment with my primary care physician. But it was late in the afternoon. And by earlier that afternoon, I was back where I was on Thursday. I could not do anything. I could barely walk, could barely move. Uh, so we went in again to the ER, and this time was a totally different experience. Um, my sincere thanks to the ER team at uh, Broward Health, Broward Health uh, Coral Springs for, even though it was a second visit, remarkable service and care uh, shown to me and to my daughter, who was sitting there with me, quite concerned, of course. Um, but as Todd and I talked about in this podcast. You can't necessarily depend on symptoms. You can't. I've learned that. Todd just gave you plenty of examples of that. We can be asymptomatic and still be ill or possibly dangerously ill. Okay? It's up to us, each of us, active firefighter, retired firefighter, active law enforcement, retired law enforcement, active EMS, retired EMS. You have to take care of yourself. Don't just assume that you know what's happening. Because with all our experience, those of us who were evolved in paramedicine, but not medical doctors, we don't know every symptom. We don't know necessarily what's causing this to happen. So if you have a question, 
about your health. Male, female, firefighter, cop, paramedic, EMT, makes no difference. You, we love to take care of people. That's why we do the jobs we do. Yeah, there's some frustration in it sometimes with the bureaucracy. Yeah, I know that. But I'm talking about the job. We choose this job. Or maybe some, like me, the job chose me. But to render that aid and take care of others that we love to do, even the hardest cases that we've seen, we still were proud that we were there to try to help them. You need to help yourself first. I've been the quasi-medical uh, director from my family, extended family, friends seek me out, and I try to give them the best information I can and still often refer them to their primary care physician and not just depend on my limited opinion and limited expertise. But I'm trying to say to you, you have to do the same thing. Don't assume that you know anything and everything could be wrong with you, especially those situations that are basically hidden, like mine was, like that captain's was, like the firefighter in Texas was. They had no idea what was happening. And we could have lost them. But thanks to LifeScan, they're still here. And with a good promise for a, a viable and nice future for them. So please, don't just assume you know it all. I know my body. Boy, how many times have I heard that when I was on calls? I know me. Well, I thought I knew me too. And I was wrong. And I paid a price for it. I'm better. I'm getting better. And another week or two, I'll be back 100%. Good news, I got another test result this morning, which was negative, and that was great. I was a little worried, but I was great. I was happy. So please, take care of yourselves. And finally, you know, most of you have read, have watched these videos and listened to the podcast know that we created a new nonprofit this year, Five Alarm Task Force Corp. We have one mission called our motto is one family one mission first responders helping each other now this is a tough time for all of us especially monetarily many of us are cut hours maybe some of us have been sick and lost hours over you know used up all our sick time and money is tight and i know that but i'm proud to tell you two stories that we have already helped in the first month that we launched the nonprofit. The first was a small volunteer fire department in Kansas. And one night, at about one o'clock in the morning, a DUI driver in a big pickup truck struck their building at approximately 100 miles an hour. He survived with a broken hip, where, of course, under the dash, where he slid upon the crash. The fire department's building was irreparably damaged as were the two pieces of apparatus they had. This is a small volunteer department. I think it was 24, 25 members and a great chief, a nice guy. I've spoken with him. And so when we read that on Chief Billy's secret list, I talked with my two colleagues on in the company. Most of you know Battalion Chief Andy Starnes and Firefighter Nick Higgins of the Firehouse Tribune. And we all agreed instantly that we needed to send some money to this fire department to help them. Then many of you, if you're in the fire service, heard just about a month ago that a firefighter south of where I live in the greater Fort Lauderdale area, down in Miami-Dade, working that late morning, responded to a fire at his own home. And when they arrived and they were able to get the fire out, he found his wife had perished in the blaze. We got that on the news, local news here. And I knew, again, this was a moment that we had to help. 
spoke with Andy and Nick. We agreed. And I was able to make contact with the captain of Corey's station, Station 6, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Station 6, Captain Morales. Great guy. Really cares for his people. And I said, look, I saw your GoFundMe page and it was doing great, but we have a new nonprofit. I'm based up here in Coral Springs and Northwest Broward. Uh, we want to help as well. And we want to send a check. And so we figured out a way to do that. And we sent a check and he called me to let me know just how much it meant to Corey. Not just GoFundMe page, but the we, Five Alarm Task Force Corp. A brand new nonprofit, hardly with much publicity, we're able, we were able to help them. So how can you help us? If you visit our website, www.the5-alarmtaskforcecorp.org, on most of the pages, you'll see the donate button. And while it's provided by PayPal, you don't have to have a PayPal account. You can use any credit or debit card that you wish. And make any donation from a dollar or more. Anything you give will help us do what we're doing. That's our only mission, is to help our brothers and sisters in dire need. Now, another way you can help and maybe get a piece of us is we have some of our shirts still available in our store on the website. And the net proceeds of your T-shirt, per, and I'm wearing one today, as you can see, this is the black version, okay? And we also have them in gray right now. And they're short sleeve. Uh, they're a real good fabric, um, uh, much better than our old T-shirts that we first got from a foreign company. And the net proceeds goes to our foundation account. And that's the account we use to disperse funds to our brothers and sisters in Diane. And you get a great t-shirt to wear. And our motto is printed on white on the back. You can see that on the website in our store. Again, at www.the5-alarmtaskforcecorp.org. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. We'll be right back on the audio. If this is the video you're watching, that's it for now. We'll have another uh, podcast interview next Thursday with Dr. Gamaliel Baer. You'll learn more about him on Thursday's recording. To all of you observing Hanukkah, Chag Sameach, have a happy holiday. For If I don't get to you all, the rest of you, by uh, early before Christmas, then my wife and family and the team here at Five Alarm Test Force wish you a very Merry Christmas and a happy Healthy New Year. Take care.